July marks racing season in the Capital Region. We've covered the races for years, so today we're taking a look back at Saratoga through the ages. In this part two of our Saratoga Race Course series, we focus on the 1980s. Up first, a story from 1980. Chris Bruner reports. The vans and trailers have been arriving for days now. Sleek thoroughbreds are getting their lodging for the next month. Saratoga is becoming a busy place in anticipation of the track's 113th meeting. Saratoga is one of the most unique tracks in all of North America. What with the racing season scheduled open in just two days, we thought you'd like to know some of the things that make this a very unique place. Our expert, Harvey Pack. Harvey is facetiously described as a professor of equine prophecy. That means he handicaps horses. And as a fixture around these parts for some time, he's intimately familiar with the things that make the track tick, like the paddock. And you'll hear pink and then yelling, horse coming through, horse coming through. And it's the only racetrack where you're that close to it, except maybe in a county fair. And this is not a county fair. This is the queen of American racing. Why does it happen here? Why is it that everybody can mingle here? Is it just the tradition of it all? Or well, it's, also, it's the layout. The layout is a major part of it. There's most of our racetracks, horses go directly to a saddling enclosure, circle once, and go out on the track. For some wonderful reason, the person who put this one together made it like this, and that's part of the ambience, part of the reasons people have been coming here forever. Betters have to know everything, and the shoe board tells them one crucial piece of information. A man comes out and lights this board up. The red light next to the corresponding number would mean the number five horse is wearing mud corks. The other things are almost customary. The aluminum is always the same, but that red, now he says, wow, the five is wearing mud corks. If the five wins, he says, oh boy, I knew he had them. This will be a very crowded area. These are our paddock betting windows, which are only oh, recent. By recent, I mean they're not 100 years ago, no. that we've added this as a convenience. And it's very popular, because it's near the walking ring and the 113-year-old trees and the saddling enclosure. And it's part of the ball game. The 16th pole, which is the first pole, is a 16th of a mile from the finish. When that horse turns for home, and these people see that, that believe me, is the greatest moment in sports, whether you're betting a dollar or a million. It's the most exciting thing. And then they come charging down this line, and as they hit this line, each horse that crosses it, a picture is taken so we can determine the exact order of finish. Sometimes the photo has to be blown up to enormous proportion. They look at it with a magnifying glass. Sometimes it's a dead heat, but that's part of it. This is the photo finish would be right here, and you are standing on two and three quarter inches of topsoil on the finest racetrack in North America, at least in my opinion. There are a few more historic spots in all of sports, this finish line. And that's what's brought the Whitney's and the Vanderbilt's back here for 113 years. And that's what brings the Smiths and Joneses here, too. Chris Bruner, 13 News at the Saratoga Racetrack. Next, we get sights and sounds from the track in 1985. This package is from Chris Kapastashi. You might remember her. She worked here for 17 years. She's now known as Chris Jansing. She's now a journalist for MSNBC and a member of the New York State Broadcasters Hall of Fame. Here's the story she turned that day in 1985. The scene is probably not what you would expect just 24 hours before the gates are scheduled to open at the flat track. It's quiet and relaxed. Come on. Well, in truth, behind the beautiful facade are frantic preparations. The food service is going full steam. And even though two of their trucks are stranded on the throughway, workers will be ready for an estimated opening crowd of 25,000. 10,000 hot dogs, 4,000 pieces of chicken, 4,000 hamburgers, and covers in the main dining room about 1,200 people, which would be 1,200 separate entrees. And if you want more statistics, 300 paramutual clerks are being trained to take bets, make payoffs, and even deal with cranky computers. So come Friday and Saturday, you're on your own. Another 275 experienced clerks will also spend August in Saratoga, assuming the terminals all get installed on time. One of the most common sites here is moving vans, most of it carrying New York Racing Association equipment and papers. Now our officials left Belmont just last night, so have just today to get ready for tomorrow's big opening. I, I think to the outsider, that's what he sees. He thinks it's chaos, and it's not really. It's all been planned, everything's been put in place, everyone knows what they're doing. Chris Kapastashi, the 30-minute news, Saratoga Springs. We have a final part of our Saratoga Look Back at the Ages series. In part three, we feature coverage from the 90s. Opening News Vault 13, I'm Rachel Teedy.